Hello and welcome to today's webinar, Optimize Jura Service Management, how to get the most out of Jura Service Management. I'm really excited uh, that so many of you joined and also that we can do this webinar together with our guests from Poland, Chris and Kate from EPSVU. Um, before we start, um, in today's topic, uh, we would like to introduce ourselves, talk a bit about Jura Service Management in the cloud and uh, what it offers. And then we deep dive into Jura Service Management, uh, where we explore the app's feature bundle, customer details, and CRM with HubSpot. And after all that, we answer your questions in the Q&A section. Some housekeeping rules up front. Uh, the webinar will be recorded. The recording will be made available afterwards. You will get an email around Friday, Saturday. Your microphones and cameras are switched off, so we are not recording you. Um, at the bottom right, you will find uh, the question section where you can ask your questions um, during the webinar. Um, we will answer them by the end. So we will collect them during the webinar. And uh, if we take surveys during the webinar, um, they are anonymously, and only the first name is displayed for your questions. Introduction, yeah, my name is Jan Szapanski. I'm one of the co-founders of Yurokus. Uh, I'm a consultant and also the marketing lead here at Yurokus. And uh, throughout my career, I used Jira and Confluence starting at pay one as a, I would say classic uh, project and process manager. And uh, yeah, over the years, um, I became more and more an in-house consultant and then eventually became a consultant uh, at Concentric and then uh, founded Eurocos uh, 2019 in Riesenbeck with uh, four other colleagues. Um, we did this because we really believed uh, in the cloud and that the cloud will be the future. Um, so we are cloud first, cloud born, so to say. Um, we are already a platinum solution partner and cloud specialized. Um, and we're working on the ITSM specialization as well. We are 51 employees overall. Uh, across Germany, we're still a 100% 100 rem remote company, um, but with uh, four different locations in Kiel, Hamburg, Düsseldorf, and Kulmbach right now. And we have over 30 plus partners, which is really important to us. Um, not only that uh, we like to do webinars with our partners, but also we think it's really important to work with them closely um, and together with us, uh, with our customers, obviously. So, Chris. Yeah. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Chris. I'm a CEO of the Artspire, and it's a real pleasure to be here and uh, talk, uh, welcome um, on on our webinar about geosystem management. And thank you, Jan, for the invitation. To us. Um, I've been working for um, uh, GeoSales Management from the very beginning, and I'm also tenuous in the Atlassian ecosystem. So I hope that uh, you will enjoy the presentation that we prepared for you. Um, yeah, so uh, a, a few words about uh, Absvio. So uh, we have been uh, funded by Atlassian Ventures this year. Uh, we are Marka Atlassian marketplace vendor, mainly focused on the GeoSales Management app. Um, we are focused on cloud. Uh, as Jan mentioned, we are also born uh, within the cloud environment. Um, we own the uh, code base twice. Uh, we also have nine apps on the marketplace. All of them are available on the cloud. Um, the apps by itself was founded by uh, Kate, uh, Piotr, and me. So we are here on board, um, ready to help you. Cool. Kate, it's your turn. <laughs> Great. So uh, my name is Kate and I am also co-founder at AppsVio. Uh, also in this company, I am a chief product officer, so I am responsible uh, for all our products from the beginning to the release on the marketplace. I am also a big fan of Jira service management, so this is why we focus on this area. 
And I'm Atlassian community leader uh, since this year, but I'm also active member uh, in the Atlassian community almost six years. Great, thank you very much. So yeah, as mentioned, before we uh, deep dive into the apps, um, I would like to talk about a little bit uh, about what Jira Service Management offers us in the cloud. So Jira Service Management, first of all, is based on the Jira platform. It's a module we can enable um, within the UI. And uh, then we do get some, some more settings, some more views on tickets, but mainly um, we will get the new service desk portal, uh, which is then available uh, to get in contact with our customers. The second module, um, which um, is within Jira Service Management is Jira Assets. Um, renamed just a few days ago. Um, name back then was Jira Insight. Um, and with Jira Assets, we are able to manage configuration items in one single or multiple object databases. Configuration items could be your laptop, smartphone, software licenses, but also your customer um, or your offices and your furniture you have there. Jira assets can be integrated via custom fields into issue screens and can be automated via Jira automation. The third part or the third module of Jira service management is OpsGene. So Jira service management is for communicating with people, whether through the portal, email, or other support channels. With OpsGenie, we can centralize um, alerts from, let's say, monitoring systems and create incidents from that, for example. Many of the features we currently have in OpsGenie um, will move into the Jira UI to make it a little bit more easy for agents to work with the systems. And the last part is automation. Automation is a no or let's say low code rule engine. Um, and those rules are based on Jira events. According to the principle, if this happens, then do that. Jira service management covers a, a wide range of IT service management processes, such as request management for, let's say, requesting access to systems, to Wi-Fi, to VPN. Um, incident management for responding to system outages. The problem management um, where we try to find the root cause of our incidents, where we can manage changes, whether it's before the actual software development, which would be the classical uh, change management, or after changes have been made to the systems and to the CIs um, used within the change management. Um, asset management, well, um, we can manage uh, our IT assets um, within the processes like change management and request management and knowledge management where you can enable your customers um, for self-service. With Jira service management, this starts with a centralized and intuitive self-service portal where your employees can get help quickly um, with a single global service catalog that can be customized to match your organization's look and feel. And use Jira service management built-in knowledge base capabilities to view relevant articles and direct request without having to contact an agent. It should be easy for, for any team, whether it's IT or HR, legal, to spin up their own service desk and to streamline their work. With Jira service management, teams can easily configure and manage their own request forms, queues, and SLAs, um, and with out-of-the-box workflows or no-code automation rules. Um, and built on top of the Jira platform, Jira service management makes it easy to link requests into the software team's backlog in Jira software and gain contacts into assets and CIs with Jira assets. With Atlassian's no-code or low-code form builder, business teams can speed up the process of creating request forms by simply getting started with over the 300 plus templates 
that license ships out of the box without contacting a JIRA administrator. So they can do that by themselves. And it contains everything from legal contract reviews, change approvals, HR requests, finance requests, and even catering requests. Um, you can do everything um, with, with those forms. Atlassian believes teams should work, uh, teams work better when knowledge is open and shared across the organization. So with Geo Service Management, agents can now use uh, the build in knowledge base functionality to author and share knowledge base articles, create one source of truth for, I don't know, project plans, run books, troubleshooting guides, post incident reviews, and so on. And so this out of the box knowledge base functionality provides real time collaborative editing, uh, providing feedback through inline comments and taking, taking fellow agents for, for review and approvals. And finally, but not, not the last feature, uh, build a culture of continuous learning um, on your team with get out of the box reports for key service metrics, monitor, optimize, and share uh, your team's work with custom dashboards. So, and with that, uh, with, without any further ado, I would hand over to Chris um, and Kate for the live demonstration. So I will stop sharing my screen here. Thank, thank you, Jan. So, yeah. and uh, I would like to start with a question, Chris. So Chris, as someone who focuses on Jira service management in the cloud, you might know this response um, or a question we get from our customers. Um, which is how agents can communicate back to their customers or display certain information in the help desk. Let's say we do have an issue with one of our ZAS services. Users now want to raise an issue that the ZAS service is not available. The team, however, already received some information about the incident, for example, via Ops Genie. And now we need a flexible way to display the information within the help desk um, and as we know, that is currently not possible or not so possible, not so flexible uh, within Jira service management. What can your apps provide here? Yeah, so thank, thank you for this question. So um, uh, at the beginning, I don't have a PowerPoint slides, but I do uh, banners from the request types uh, that uh, looks like my presentation or my slides. So in terms of the communication, um, and the announcement banners are all about the communication between the company and customers. A big part of the request that would never be created if customers got proper information upfront. People are requests to handle by agents are desired, especially when they are connected to planet outages. And as you can see here, on, there are two um, situations. The first one is without um, information on the banner. Uh, let's imagine that we have um, a failure and there's a lot of customers that are affected by this failure. And um, then at the end, uh, your um, agents would have a lot of requests to handle uh, because of the, the failure and no information. And the second um, situation is exactly the same, except that we have a banner of information about the failure. Um, at the end, there is no request or there is much more less request to handle by the agent. Um, yeah, so let's let's go to the next um, banner. Uh, when we think about banners, the most important question is why do we need them? Um, there are hundreds of situations where banners would be useful, beginning from uh, sharing information about the maintenance windows and ending on more not obvious use cases like um, information about the upcoming conferences or promotions. Um, banners can also be useful in, in other situations like the uh, informing about the upcoming holidays or sharing information about planet upgrades, downtimes, or migrations to other servers. It could be used as a step-by-step -step instruction um, uh, to put on the customer portal for the customers. 
Um, it could provide a better explanation to the service catalog you have in the customer portal. So basically it can be some kind of extension to the knowledge base that the GS of management and the Confluence provides. Um, many of you uh, know that there is a um, banner feature in GS of desk, but there are a few pain points um, of using them. And the first one is there's no text formatting options. There's no style settings and there's just one banner from the entire service desk. So as we already know, the restrictions and limitations of default banners, so let's take a look at, uh, at the questions that might help you to create a, a perfect banner. Um, so uh, first you need to think about what kind of message you'd like to show to customers. Um, an active incident where many uh, users or customers um, are impacted will be, def will be definitely um, uh, have a different time, uh, different tone of voice when, uh, when we compare it to the banner with information about the, the planet upgrade. Also, some banners are valid only in a given time frame. For example, uh, the banner um, with the Christmas wishes will be presented only in December. Um, a perfect banner has uh, its target audience as well, and it's uh, displayed only on the target customers. And there's no need to show banners in a language that affected customers do not speak. Um, and the last question is um, about um, location. So we should think uh, where the banner would be displayed because the geoservice management provides several pages in, uh, in the portal. Um, and let's go back to the Christmas Switch banner. So for example, uh, the best place to put it will be probably the help center because it's a common starting point for many customers. Uh, once we know the questions, uh, the, the answer to the question is how to create a perfect banner. So we can just start designing our banner in the feature bundle. So how to do that? Um, let's go to the next slide. And we have a video that shows you um, how to add a banner and how to customize it in a feature bundle. Um, I will not play the video now because we don't have much time, but my intention was to show you that you can um, add a YouTube video to the banner. Uh, and it's pretty awesome, I think. Um, on the last slide, I will show you um, uh, the other ideas for the banners. Uh, and this list might be endless as each of um, each company can have uh, a different ideas or different needs. And each situation could use uh, this feature in its own way. So uh, just uh, going uh, quickly through the ideas, it could be a tutorial um, that is recorded um, as a video that you can add to the proper request type about uh, the connection to the corporate wireless network. It could be maintenance. Uh, Windows um, information for your customers. It could be uh, information about the holidays um, that is available, visible to all and it's scheduled um, annually. Um, the banner could be also, um, or could um, have a Google Forms and it could be treated as a survey about the products company, uh, company products, sorry. And uh, the last example that I have, uh, it could be also a video with, uh, with the speech of the CEO that, uh, that could be a welcome speech uh, that is uh, uh, created for the new employees if the um, employees use a customer portal and the customers are really the employees. So there are many examples. Um, and this, I think this is just the beginning of the ideas that you have behind the the banners feature. Really great, thank you very much. I think, yeah, that's that's a really great feature. Um, not only that you can display information in the service desk, but also in the in the request type as well and to guide your customers uh, through, through the create issue screen. Talking about the create issue screen, another thing we quite hear a lot from, from customers is that when a user already submitted, let's say a support request, 
they can't change the fields afterwards. The only way to communicate with the support agent is via comment. Is there a way to, to edit requests within the support portal? Uh, so using our app feature bundle, it's possible. And uh, maybe I will show um, this on the example uh, about new employee in our company. Uh, Chris was uh, talking about a welcome speech as, a, uh, as an announcement banner. And uh, I would like to show you a ticket request that someone uh, joins our um, support team. And uh, I created this ticket to prepare some equipment and access tools for uh, our new colleague, Adam. Uh, support hasn't started working on this issue because we have got a status open and we receive information that we need to make a change. So this is uh, what you uh, said, that we have to put some comment that uh, something uh, is changing. But... Um, uh, thanks to our app, we have got a special link here called Edit Request. And uh, using this uh, link, we can open uh, a dialog where we can modify some fields. Uh, it can be system fields or custom fields, depending on our configuration. So, uh, first of all, uh, we have to uh, wait uh, when this model is open. My, Internet is very slowly, I see. Okay, <laughs> it works, thanks God. Uh, okay, so as I said, we have got uh, some custom fields to edit and what is happening uh, in our situation. The first November is uh, a day off. So a new employee will join uh, our, our team on the 2nd of November. So easily I can modify this due date. Uh, also, uh, it should be a bigger MacBook. Uh, so not 13, but another thing, uh, 16, probably. So I choose it. And also uh, Adam should have access not only to uh, Adobe Creative Cloud, but also to Zoom. And uh, uh, no, no, Zoom. The Zoom and Slack. As you can see, uh, these uh, two fields are uh, inside fields, which are available for uh, enterprise and premium customers. So we also support uh, these fields. So I'm clicking save to uh, save all changes. And as you can see, this ticket uh, has been updated. What's more, uh, here I have got a dedicated panel uh, with information, where is my request? So here I have information about the journey of this request. So now when uh, this request in, uh, in the state is open, uh, I see that this is a um, waiting for team a stage uh, when uh, working on this request hasn't started yet, so I can make changes if I need. Uh, what is worth to say here that I have more information uh, what is going on on every status, on every stage with uh, my request, but also uh, I open this uh, issue and I see it as an agent and I can uh, change the status uh, of this. So I make change that uh, we start working on this one. And when I refresh this request to see what is going on with this ticket, I have a new status and I don't see this option edit request. This is why um, uh, that in the configuration, I define that this edit request uh, link is visible only and only uh, in the open status. So we have got a very advanced configuration and we can define when this option is available also for whom so uh, using this uh, these two features which are my favorites uh, in this app we can uh, do a lot of things uh, without asking agents without uh, any ping pong in comments uh, could you please modify something could you change uh, some custom field 
uh, everything customer can do. So I think that's it's uh, really really important that uh, agent can focus on resolve ticket, not uh, making some comments uh, which are unnecessary. Absolutely, thanks, Kate. I, yeah, I think that's something that can drastically improve the communication between customers and agents uh, by yeah enabling the customer to update specific fields. Um, so that agents do not need to scroll endlessly through through the issue history. So that's that's pretty cool. Um, as Chris already mentioned before, um, unfortunately, the Jira Service Management Portal is still very limited in the way you can customize it, especially for customers. So depending on how your customer relationship management system is integrated with Jira, um, you want more information um, for your customer contacts than just the full name and then the email address. Um, so how can the app customer details be utilized to give agents more information about the person he's talking to? Uh, so as I said, it's better to uh, for agents to focus on resolving tickets, not, uh, not uh, commenting all the time. Uh, it's the same with uh, managing customers and collecting information about them. Uh, so this is why we created um, our app uh, called Customer Details, uh, which I will also show you. So I'm sharing my screen. Okay. So uh, in case of Customer Details app, uh, we have got uh, a one source of truth uh, about customers as well as organizations. So here we have got one uh, view where we can uh, manage all information about customers. So um, basically in uh, standard uh, Jira service management, we have got only information about name and email. Uh, and also we can find requests created by uh, the customers. But uh, with our app, you can define some fields uh, in which you uh, can collect some additional information, like in this example, position, preferred contact, some internal comments provided by agent, uh, also support level. Uh, you can create as many uh, as uh, you need um, fields. Uh, because here we have got a dedicated um, section, design a form, and you can define using uh, a lot of type of fields. Uh, you can define this form. You can define which information you want to collect about customers. Also, we have the same uh, about organizations. So thanks to this, uh, you have all information about uh, customers in one place. You don't have to ask every time uh, what is your support level, for example. Of, uh, what's more, you don't have to spend time to find this information in some external resources like some Excel file. So everything is in one place. Uh, what's more, we have got this information not only in this view, which is, uh, of course, uh, customizable, you can filter, you can add some columns, but you can also find this information on the issue. So issue, which is also very important part for agents uh, in their work. Uh, so here we have got a dedicated issue glance. Uh, in this area is from our app. Uh, so I'm clicking on this and I can uh, find all information about the reporter of this request. In this case, uh, it was me. So I have all information uh, about myself. So telephone position, everything, what is configured. Uh, also, I have a quick link to uh, all tickets created uh, by this customer. So it's uh, also very useful to check if uh, this person uh, had the same uh, problem in the past, for example, or uh, when the um, customer uh, are asking us uh, about some improvements, uh, about the progress of um, previous tickets. So it's also very useful that we have got a quick link to find all this information. What is uh, also unique, this tool is not only for agents uh, to manage all this information, but also for customers. 
And when I'm on my profile uh, on the help center, I have this information here and I can put this data uh, um, as a customer. So also I don't have to put the same data all the time uh, in tickets or some in comments because everything I can put once uh, in this area which is dedicated uh, for me. Uh, and I can also update this information when something is changing. So as you can see, it's not only for agents to make uh, this life easier, but also for customers. Uh, and it's the same story like in uh, editing requests that we don't want to make a ping pong in comments and asking all the time about the same things. Uh, also, we can uh, put some comments, internal comments about uh, some customers. So it's it's very useful to boost our um, uh, our support uh, and also this uh, the whole customer experience. Very great. Thank you very much, Kate. Um, one more thing for Chris, I think. Uh, let's say now we have uh, a CRM tool, a customer relationship management system, like, I don't know, HubSpot, let's say. Um, how can how can we use those integrations and what would be the value of those integrations? Yeah, um, so the, the best way to show the value of Jiren, the HubSpot integration, uh, would be just to, to show you in action. So uh, here you can see the... Um, the issue from Jira, uh, this is the agent's view. And uh, this is my account. Uh, so I use my um, Absvio email address. And I also have an account on HubSpot instance. Um, uh, what's interesting, the HubSpot creates companies automatically based on the email address, so you don't have to do that. And I have some deals connected to my account. Um, I could have many deals, but I have just uh, one deal here, and um, the value. The, so the value uh, is for the GR agents uh, because um, to see the half to data, we can just click on the glance panel and um, we'll have everything that we selected in the app configuration. Uh, so basically, uh, those are the half of properties. Um, uh, I can configure what properties will be visible on the ticket level. And once I click the company, I see all the information regarding the company and the same with the deals. So once I click the deals, uh, there will be a list of deals. And when I click on the specific deal, I will see um, the data that comes from the deal. And each time I refresh the issue, I get the fresh information from the HubSpot. So uh, you can be sure that you see uh, the actual data. Um, this is the first feature, like displaying information uh, from the hotspot uh, on a ticket level. And the second feature uh, is about linking a GUI issue with the hotspot object. Um, it's, um, um, it's, uh, it could be achieved by a caption field. So um, there's a caption field on the screen, uh, and it's a uh, caption field provided by by the uh, by the app. Um, and um, it's pretty simple. Like uh, you can just type uh, the value here, and I will find two customers: the app Spire and Tidokus. Um And I can just simply um, say. Uh, the issue and it will be saved as a value in the cast uh, as a value in the cast field on the ticket level or on the issue. What does it mean? Uh, it means that you can use this information in the JQL, for example. And here you can see um, um, the value in a customer's um, custom field. Um, so um, when I click on the uh, on the link on the uh, custom field, I will be directed to the hub so to the proper object. And I can also choose what kind of objects the custom field is linked to. So I can choose from the clients, customers, and the deals. Um, so the value is about jumping between two tools. Uh, if 
um, if you use the GUI and the hotspot, uh, then you can use just, uh, you can um, have all information uh, in GUI um, and it, this, this will speed up the, the agent's work. 